Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <clears throat> For July 31st, we are going to be reading out of John 17, 23. I in them. Now, this verse is actually a lot bigger. The whole verse says, I in them and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Now, let's read this in context here because it's pretty standalone. One, two, three, four. We're actually going to go to verse 17. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they may also, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That's all of us over the last 2,000 years. That they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. That they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, just as we are one. I am them, and you and me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you loved have loved me. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you sent me, and I have declared to them your name, and will declare it, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them incredible prayer that the Lord gave it. There's actually a lot more to it. Incredible prayer. <clears throat> if such be the union which subsists between our souls and the person of our Lord, how deep and broad is the channel of our communion? This is no narrow pipe through which a thread-like stream may wind its way. It is a channel of amazing depth and breadth. Think Grand Canyon or even bigger. Along with glorious length, a ponderous volume of living water may roll its floods. Behold, he had set before us an open door. Let us not be slow to enter. This city of communion hath many pearly gates. Every, uh, yeah, every several gate is of one pearl. This is the uh, New Jerusalem he's describing. And each gate is thrown open to the uttermost that we may enter, assured of welcome. If there were but one small loophole, through which to talk with Jesus, it would be a high privilege to thrust a word of fellowship through the narrow door. How much we are blessed in having so large an entrance. Had the Lord Jesus been far away from us, with many a stormy sea between, we would have longed to send a messenger to him to carry him our loves and bring us tidings from his father's house. But see his kindness. He has built his house next door to ours. Nay, more. He takes lodging, or, yeah, he takes lodging with us, and tabernacles, and poor humble hearts, that so he may have perpetual intercourse with us. Oh, how foolish must we be if we do not live in habitual communica or communion with him. When the road is long and dangerous and difficult, we need not wonder that friends seldom meet each other, but when they live together, Shall Jonathan forget his David? A wife may, when her husband is upon a journey, abide many days without holding converse with him. But she could, and that was how it was when I was deployed to Iraq. But she could never endure to be separated from him if she knew him to be in one of the chambers of her own house. Why, believer, dost thou sit at this banquet of wine? Seek thy Lord, for he is near. Embrace him, for he is thy brother. Hold him fast, for he is thine husband. And press him to thine heart, for he is of thine own flesh. And that prayer that Jesus gave reiterates this very clearly, that we are one with him. He is one with the Father. We are one with him. That makes us one with the Father, too. The understanding eludes most of us. The deeper understanding eludes 
most of us. And I'm glad that it does in, in greater part. Because if we understood just how much we are attached to the Lord and to our Father, how much privilege we have and access we have, it would cause us to go into a state of very, very heavy pride. I'm glad that I don't fully understand it here in this body. Because I know and understand that it would probably lead me into pride on the other side. And I see a lot of people do that today. Now, whether they've come to that understanding or not, I have no idea. But they always keep trying to make themselves out to be a little god. And we're not little gods. We're not going to be little gods. That's not biblical. When the scripture that says, ye are gods, that's because we're linked to him. We're not gods. But because we're tied to him. We're a part of him. If we understood just how deep this goes, just how how much detail is associated with this understanding, if we could grasp it all, I, I fear that because we're in the flesh, it would cause us to stumble greatly. Because it would lead to pride. It would lead to us thinking we're more special than others. And that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be more humble. Because we know the truth. We're supposed to reach out to those people to help them and bring them into the light and see more. And so there are some cases where I start to discover things or my mind starts to awaken to certain things. And in, I see the trouble that can come from it because of me personally. And I kind of push back a little bit again. I'm not rejecting it, just not focusing on it. Because I don't want to get into that state. I don't want to use this understanding and this knowledge improperly. I don't want to be that guy, you know, that decides, Oh, I'm this? Well, I'm going to lord that over other people. And we can't do that. It's very, very, very wrong for us to do. But to understand what we are now, even in this flesh... We are attached to Christ. We are one with him right now. And we can't do a lot of the things that he did. But then again, we can. It just doesn't look the same as what it did back then. It is a miracle that a person is able to get somebody who isn't a believer to believe the gospel. That's a miracle. In a way, that's a healing because they're healing their heart. So we do the things that the Lord did. It just doesn't look the same this day and age look what people do whenever they try to fake the healings and all that Todd White's a great example of how he tricks people you ever look at, he's never lengthened a leg it's a trick watch the feet you'll see one foot tilt up makes the leg look longer One of the things we have to make sure we're careful of is that we're not going to use what the Lord is revealing to us in an improper way or use it as an opportunity for pride. We don't want to use it to lord over other people. There's a lot of Christians that do that. They get into that state where I'm better than everybody else. Well, in a way you are, but not to be prideful, not to hold it over somebody's head, not to think that you're better than they are. Because in reality... We're not. <clears throat> we are in Christ, but in the flesh we're not because we know the truth and still mess up. Knowing our depravity and understanding our depravity can help us stay much more humble. But we still need to know who we are as believers. And the full realization of that will come on the day of redemption. We still must believe and know who we are in Christ. And because we are that in Christ, we are that in God. We are one with both of them. And that connection we have is through the Holy Spirit. It is a blessing, an incredible blessing, and a privilege to have what we have. So no matter where our understanding goes, no matter what conclusions we come to of just exactly who we are, let us never use that as an opportunity. But instead, let us glorify God in that. Let us worship God. Let us give thanks for that to our Lord Jesus Christ, that through him we have this. 
wonderful, wonderful gift, wonderful privilege and honor to be called a child of God. My wife's on the tractor this morning. She's ruining my pause for effect. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, first I want to thank you for this wonderful word you've given us, this holy word of yours that you provided for this generation so that we would have the truth in writing in front of us, that every argument is shut down immediately, that it is against it. And we thank you for this daily devotion that opens us up to better discussion and more discussion, more detailed personal discussion about our situation and about what's been done for us and what's available to us about your love for us, our Lord, and what he's done, and the connection we have to him. We are one in you, Jesus Christ. And because we're one in you, we are one in the Father. Your very words state this quite clearly. I thank you for the life you've given me. I thank you that you've given me the training in this life, the preparation, the problems, the issues, all the things that have taught me. And I thank you for this word that has taken those things and taught me why they happened and what they were meant for. This word that has also shown me who I am in you. That I am a child of God. That I'm not like everybody else. Even though I'm still in the flesh, I'm not like everybody else. But I ask that you never, ever let me use this as an opportunity for pride. Never let me use this as an opportunity over someone else or to hold it over someone else. Never let me take advantage of who I am and what I have. But instead, let me make me to bring others into the fold. Make me to cause others to believe. Let me take this blessing and this privilege and use it to benefit others. Just like your word says. There are so many people today that, I mean, they're not even Christians, they're false professors, that they're taking this these statements and they're using them uh, to put themselves in a higher position above other people. That was never the intent. The idea wasn't that we stand in front of everybody and push them back while we move forward. The idea was we stand behind them and push them forward. So that everybody wins the race. But in this world today, like you said, at that time when the tribulation was coming, the love of many would grow cold, and here it is. It's hard to find any real, real human love in this world. I struggle to find it. Every now and then, I see it. I see you working in the hearts of people. I run into a brother or sister out there. And we may never get to the conversation of who we are to each other, we know. We can sense it. Father, change us. Change our minds. Make us to know who we were. And make us to know who we are. We Make us to know who we were so that we stay humble and remember. Make us to know who we are so that we can walk in a different way. And believe and commune and love and have peace and hope. So that we may glorify you. And have a reason to glorify you. A lot of people don't know why they're glorifying you. You've given us something that we didn't deserve. Our Lord died on the cross to give us something we didn't have and didn't deserve to have. <clears throat> so, Father, thank you for all these things, for these wonderful blessings, for these incredible insights. And I also thank you that we don't fully understand them because if I, think we, I think if we did, we would probably mess it up. I thank you that we don't fully grasp exactly the ramifications and the details behind this of who we are. Because I think if we did, we would probably mess it up. I thank you that you only give us what we can handle. 
Because if we had it all, we would do something wrong with it. That's the flesh. That's human pride. I'm looking forward to the day when these things won't affect us anymore. They won't even be on our radar anymore. We will be completely different people. You made a statement, a very interesting statement. After the change, after we're redeemed, we will be known. We will be known as we were. We will be known for who we used to be. People will recognize us that way, but we will be different. And I'm actually looking forward to being different. To not being the same exact person that I was, but being better, perfect in you. And that day is fast approaching. Let us not tire of doing good. Let us not tire of glorifying you. Let us not tire of giving thanks. Let us not tire of sharing the gospel. Let us keep going. Make us to keep going. Because it is a blessing to be who we are. It is a blessing to be a child of God, to be in Christ, and therefore to be in you. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for peace and hope. Thank you for your free gift of salvation that you provided through the atonement of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In his name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for Daily Devotion. If we fully understood exactly what was going on here, we're only going to do one of two responses. First response, which would probably be a fleshly one, take advantage of it and lord it over other people's heads and mess it up, making a mockery of God. Or we're going to run full force into it and embrace who we are in him and therefore become something much different in the eyes of the people around us. Someone caring and loving and peaceful, self-sacrificing in every way. Today we see most people go the wrong way. But those who are truly his, when they start to come into this understanding a little deeper, they go closer. Because that's what they desire to be. May we all desire to be the kind of person our Lord wills us to be. And no matter how much we learn and how much we know, may that never change us to the bad side, but instead push us more to the good side. That we may, by our actions and by our lives, glorify him in everything. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.